You know that the key to a successful business is having a professional online presence. And if you have worked tirelessly creating this online presence, you want to ensure that you safeguard your website as much as possible. That's why on today's video, I'm going to be walking you through three free WordPress plugins that I insist you install on your website to protect your investment. The first plugin that we are going to be installing onto our WordPress website, it's a completely free plugin and that is the WordFence plugin. Now the WordFence plugin is what I like to call the bouncer at the door of your website. It protects your website from getting any hackers coming in and it checks to see if your plugins need to be updated and also to see if anyone has been tampering with your files. So we're going to come into our website. So we're going to go to our dashboard. Then we're going to go to plugins and we're going to click on add new. Once we are here, we're going to come to search plugins and we're going to type in WordFence and then we're going to click enter. Once we have clicked enter, we're going to install this plugin here. We can see it has 4 million active installations and it was last updated seven days ago. We can see it's called WordFence security. It secures your website and it's also got firewall and malware scanning. So we're going to click install now and once it has been installed, we are there going to activate this plugin. Okay, so once we have installed the plugin, you can tell WordFence where exactly you want your security alerts to be sent to. So it's really great with WordFence, you pop in your email address and you can set your notifications to let you know on a daily or weekly basis what's going on in your website, if their plugins updated or if people have been trying to log into your website. So what you'll do is you will pop in your email address here and then if you do want to sign up to their newsletter, you can click yes or no. I'm going to say no. And then you're just going to agree to their WordFence terms and conditions and click continue. Okay, so once you click continue, it's going to ask you to put in your premium license key. There is a premium version of WordFence. However, I don't think it's necessary due to upgrade. So in this case, I'm just going to click no thanks. Okay, so once WordFence has been installed, you'll see WordFence here on the left hand side so we can click on WordFence. It's going to take us to the dashboard and then it's got this kind of welcome sequence that it goes through, walks you through the dashboard. You can either go through this or you can click the cross at the top. Okay, to set up WordFence, there's a couple of things that I recommend you do. The first is it asks you, do you want to keep WordFence up to date? Then I highly recommend saying yes, it's a good idea to keep it up to date. And then right at the top here with WordFence, you'll see to make your site as secure as possible, take a moment to optimize the WordFence web application firewall. So you're going to click on this to configure it. It's going to bring up this pop-up and this asks you to download your HT access file or depending on whatever this comes up with, there might be two files that you need to download. So what you're going to do is just download that HT access file onto your desktop and then you're going to click continue. And that's then going to install and set up WordFriends correctly. So you can see the installation has been successful. Okay, so now WordFence has been installed correctly. There's nothing more you really need to do. You can go through the dashboard and go through all of the sections. You can just see on the sections your notifications and you can also go through a scan. So here on the left hand side, if we click scan, we can start a new scan. And with my website, we can see there's quite a few things that need to be addressed. So for example, here, my WordPress is out of date. So that's a really high priority. And what you can do is, is go in update WordPress. You can see Akasmet needs to be updated. So there's a couple of plugins that do need to be updated. So once I update those, then I do another WordFence scan, then those will be perfectly fine. The next plugin we're going to install on our WordPress website is Akasmet. So Akasmet is a spam filtering plugin. So if you're writing any blog posts, or anything like that, then what it does, it filters out hundreds and millions of spam comments from your website. Okay, so if we go to our website, we go to plugins with every standard installation of WordPress, it comes with the Akismet anti-spam plugin. Okay, so currently this plugin isn't active on my website. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to activate this spam plugin. And the next process is to set up your Akismet account. So I'm going to click set up my Akismet 
account. That's then going to take me to another page. And if you have a personal account that's just got a blog on it, you don't have to pay for it. However, if you do have, um, if you're selling any services or products on your website, you will need to pay for this. And this is a yearly fee that you pay for Akismet. So I'm going to click on get personal and then I'm going to fill in all my details over here on the right hand side. I'm just going to change this to zero. So this means that I don't have to pay for this. So I'm going to set up this, add in my email address, and then I'm going to put in my domain. So let's just copy my domain from here. Um, I don't have ads on my site and I'm not selling products and I don't promote a business. So then I can continue with my personal subscription. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to go to my Gmail account, get my confirmation code. And then I can paste it in there and then click continue. Okay, so I can see that it has been set up correctly. I got this email from Akismet with my API key. So what I'm going to do is just copy that API key. I'm going to come back to my website. I'm going to click manually enter an API key. So I'm going to paste that in there. And then I'm going to click connect with API key. Okay, once it's done, there are a couple of settings I can go through. I can set how the spam is discarded and what happens with it. And then I can click save change and then the Akismet spam protection has been set up. The last plugin you'll want to use on your website is a backup plugin and in this case I'm going to be using the free Updraft Plus WordPress backup plugin. I love this plugin, I use it for all my clients. It's a free plugin and it takes a backup of both your database and your files and it sends it to off-site storage. So let's go to our website, we're going to come to plugins, click on add new. In the search plugins box we're going to type in Updraft plus and we're going to click enter this is actually a one word so let's just change that and there it is there we can see three plus million active installations last updated three weeks ago so we're going to click install now and then we're going to click activate okay so once it has been activated there is a welcome sequence that it walks you through you can either go through that or just follow my instructions so what we're going to do is you can see updraft plus here if you go to settings then you can go to updraft plus there and the first thing you want to do is go to the third tab which is your settings and this is when you're going to set up your automatic backup so you can choose depending on how often you update your website is how often you take backups so if you're updating your website on a more frequent basis then I recommend taking backups at least on a weekly or on a fortnightly basis if you're not doing as many changes to your website you can always just choose monthly so let's go for monthly and we're going to keep it as two backups there so it's going to take two file backups and two database backups the next thing is to choose your remote storage now I don't recommend you rely on your host provider to take backups so that's why I recommend installing this plugin and the second thing I don't recommend you do is take backups and store it on your host providers files so basically on your website if you do so and your website goes down then you also lose your backups and even worse it takes up all the space on your host providers account so you can choose from Dropbox Google Drive even your email address so let's say for example I want to go with Google Drive so I'll click on that then the next thing I'll do is everything else we'll leave as is all these settings just leave it as is and then click save changes now once you click save changes it's going to ask you to sign in with your Google account and authorize Google to take these backups so I'm going to click on my email address and then I'm going to click allow once I've done that I'm going to click complete setup and now my remote storage has been set up so whenever I take a backup of my website or whenever it automatically takes a backup it will be sent to Google Drive and then I have both the files and the database so right now it's actually going through the process of backing up my website and sending it to Google Drive so you can see here with this blue bar it's going through that process it's creating backups and zipping those files and sending them off site if at any stage in your website journey you want to update plugins or you want to make changes and you're really worried about making these changes you can always go in and click on this backup now button that will then take a backup before you make any changes and send it to your offsite storage 
so you don't have to wait till those automatic backups have been done so you can see there um, it's busy taking those backups and you can see the next one will be done Friday December the 2nd so this will go through the process of taking that backup and depending on how big your website is how long it takes to back up the website and send it to offsite storage if you have lots of images lots of plugins lots of files then yes it's going to take a while I'd say about five minutes but usually it's around two to three minutes before I go I have one more free thing for you to do if you are finally ready to launch a beautiful and professional WordPress website watch this video right here where I walk you from the beginning to the end and the whole process of creating your very first WordPress website trust me if you are done hiding behind a coming soon page or not feeling confident about your website you want to give this video a watch right now